Hey, it's Mike from BrewDashDudes.com. So one piece of temp control is the Johnson A419 Digital Controller. Um, this is a very popular piece of equipment you see in all the homebrew magazines um, that people buy to control either a fridge for fermentation or a heater for fermentation. Um, I use mine for uh, heating in the wintertime and cooling in the summer. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but what we want to sh one of the things that people have got the hardest question with is how do I switch it from a heating mode to a cooling mode or vice versa? So we're going to walk through step-by-step uh, -step opening this thing up, going in, looking at the electronics, and switching over the jumpers and show you exactly what to do to switch back and forth from cooling to heating. Um, on the outside, it's pretty simple. you got three cables coming out of this thing. Um, the small gray one is your temp probe, and then you've got two others, one that plugs into the wall, and then the other one is just a regular plug that has your either your heating device or your cooling device plugs into here. So let's take a look inside and we'll, uh, we'll take it apart and we'll figure out how to switch it over from heating to cooling. All right, so the first thing you need to do is you need to get inside this thing to change the jumpers. There's four screws here. Piece of cake, you just loosen them up. The good thing about these screws is that they won't come out. They're actually... Uh, kind of fastened in there. So you just loosen them until um, you feel it all the way loosened up and you don't have to worry about losing a screw. Okay, okay I've got all the screws loosened up and now we're going to open it up. I found the best thing to do is you just lift it up vertically. And you have to be careful because there's wires inside here that attach to the digital display. So if you just lift it straight up and over the top like that you're in pretty good shape. You can see there are the wires there for the, the front piece. So you don't want to go too far much further than that because you don't want to uh, break the circuit board. All right, so here's the inside. The, the parts you need to be concerned with most are these two jumpers right here. This is the factory default setting when it comes in the mail. You can see that there are two small pins down here, one and two, that the jumpers aren't on. The jumpers are kind of off to the side. So this is cooling mode. To switch it to heating mode, all you simply have to do is pull off this top jumper and put it, place it over both pins, just like that, and you gently push it back down. So you can see they're kind of offset, but the top one is on both pins, and the bottom one is on the side pin. Alright, so we're in heating mode and we want to go back to cooling mode. You just take this top jumper off that's straddling both pins and you put it back to one single pin. And now you're back in cooling mode, just like the factory default. Okay, so now to close it back up, you just want to sort of line up the screws again. I do the top ones. Remember, you got to be careful of that set of wires that goes to the digital display. There's this little piece of cardboard that protects some of the electronics underneath there. You want to make sure you just kind of push that in. I kind of have to hold it there because it wants to pop out. Then you just get it back in place and I just squeeze it and hold it and you just tighten the screws back up. That's how you take apart your Johnson controller and switch from heating to cooling. Um, now there's another setting in there that I, we didn't review inside but there's there's the option to have the device cutting in at temperature or cutting out at temperature. Uh, the factory default is to cut in. And what that means is um, when your device is in, say, heating mode, when the set point drops below the temperature you want it at, let's say it's 70 degrees, when it drops below the set point, you've got it connected to a heater, the heater cuts in or turns on to bring the temperature back up to set point. And the opposite is true with cooling. Um, when the temperature starts to get too warm, the freezer that you've got to plug into cuts in and it comes down. Um, but the other option is you can do those things in a cut out mode, and it does exactly the opposite. Um, and I think the only reason why you would use a cutout mode is if you had two Johnson controllers working op opposed to each other, meaning that you might have your fermenter in a freezer, in a chest freezer, and you also put a firm wrap on it or have some sort of heating device in there too. So you really want to try to go for really tight temp control, and you want to have your, both controllers uh, working um, against each other. So one would be set to cut in for heating, and one would be cut out for cooling and that keeps them uh, opposed to each other for really tight temp control. But I just use the one controller, it's always set to cut in, and you can set the differential in, in there for like three or four degrees, 
Um, I've never had a problem thinking I've got too big a swing. So um, I think just operating with one controller and cutting in for either heater and coolant works just fine. So that's a review, that's tips on how to take apart your Johnson uh, controller, set it for heating and cooling. I uh, hope that helps. Always shoot us more questions, uh, leave a comment on the video. Um, other than that, uh, good luck with temp control. Brew on.